Hello, folks. This is your host, Tammy Tucky, and you are now listening to the Tierra Talk Show. We bring you rare interviews with the makers of Disney Magic. Whether they be singers, actors, Imagineers, animators, they have all made their mark on the Disney name. Be sure to check out the show notes, other episodes, contests, our social media pages from Facebook to Twitter, and more on our official website at www.thetierratalkshow.com. All guest opinions are theirs and theirs alone and do not represent the opinions of the Tierra Talk Show or the host. The Tierra Talk Show is not associated with the Disney Company. Thank you for tuning into this week's episode. And from all of us here at the Tierra Talk Show, have a hoop de doo day. I'm excited to welcome this week's Tierra Talk Show guest, songwriter Jerry Buckner to the show. Welcome, Jerry. I am so happy to be here, Tammy. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's it's lovely to have you. We don't have a lot of people who write songs on the show as often as I'd like, because I'm such a big fan of learning how a song is composed. It's just very interesting to see how, how different songwriters go through that process of creating something. So um, I thought we'd talk about your beginnings. What inspired you to become a songwriter? Well, when I was a kid, I just, uh, we, we had a piano. My dad had a piano at home. My dad uh, was into gospel music, and he uh, had an old piano at home when I was just a kid. I was probably seven, eight years old. And uh, he got these mail-in piano courses, uh, and he was trying to learn to play piano so he could play it with his group. Well, one night, uh, my mom was home, and I were, we were just the two of us, and she was humming the song in the kitchen. So I heard her humming. It was a sentimental journey. And I heard her, and I sat down at the piano and, and just started playing it. And uh, she said she come in and she was, uh, you know, amazed. And my dad came home. She said, play that for your dad. So I did. And they discovered, you know, I thought everybody could do that. But I I could hear I can hear a song and, and play it. Uh, and so uh, after that, my dad said, you're taking a lesson. So I started taking lessons. And then I started getting ideas uh, for little songs. I would make up these little uh, instrumental songs on the piano. And that's kind of where it started. And then when I got into high school, uh, I really wanted to write songs. I just, you know, I wanted to, I, they were like their ideas for them and I just wanted to do them. And, uh, you know, it's a long process, as a, at least for me it was, as a writer to learn how to write uh, a song, a uh, commercial song. I mean, anybody can write a song, and uh, but when you're writing a commercial song, I mean, it's it's not just some people think, oh, you, this came into your mind and you just, there it was. It was, yeah, the ideas, but putting it together and the words, it's, it's a lot of work and, and it takes a while to, to learn how to do it. Uh, Gary and I uh, lived within a, you know, a couple miles of each other, went to school together from junior high on and became friends. And he kind of started a little band in, in high school. And then I started one. And then eventually we hooked up together and, and we're in bands playing. And then eventually uh, ended up in Atlanta where we started the, the second part of our, really our career together uh, as songwriters and performers. And of course, you come out with the Pac-Man Fever hit, and uh, this goes gold certified 45, which is amazing, in 1982. And the reason I know about this song is because as we were speaking off air, my father, he owns a business where he sells arcade machines and pinball machines. You know, what was the inspiration for that initially? Were you guys playing Pac-Man and just thought, you know, wouldn't it be cool if we could make a song out of it? Well, uh, not exactly. What happened was at the time we were writing, doing commercial jingles here in Atlanta. And we were working on a project at a studio close to where uh, Marietta, Marietta, Georgia, is just north of Atlanta. And uh, we were we would go to this particular restaurant at night to grab a bite to eat before we went back to work. And one of the nights we were in there, this Pac-Man machine showed up and people were playing it. So like everybody else, we what is this? So we went and played it. Well, we got hooked like everybody. And we were in that. We started playing that thing every night and not getting our work done. So at some point uh, we thought, you know, I wonder if you could do some kind of a little song, some kind of a song with this. Uh, and if we could, maybe we, it would get attention for our commercial business. That's what we originally thought, that it might help us get attention in Atlanta to, to write more jingles, you know, if we could get it on the air. So that was the, the main idea behind it. Uh, but once we uh, recorded the song uh, at Studio One and it became started coming together, we realized, well, this is coming together as a, as a record, you know, sounding good. Before Wreck-It Ralph, you know, there were other pinball films. So have you ever, was that ever an inkling in both of your minds to write a song for a film? Well, uh, actually, we were approached, uh, our management company was approached by a film company that was doing some sort of a video game film back in at that time. Uh, it never 
it never gelled because they they couldn't agree on the on the money and so forth. Uh, but we always were prepared to to write. You know, we I mean, we were really prepared to write for films because of all doing the jingles and for you know commercials and videos. So yeah, we were prepared for that, but we didn't really go after that. Um, you know, per se, we really were more concerned with records and wanting to continue on you know, recording songs and getting more hits. And when were you approached by Disney to work on the theme song for the Wreck-It Ralph arcade machine that they have featured in the film? Um, I got a, received a phone call in uh, late summer of 2012 uh, from Tom McDougal, who heads the music, uh, film music at, at Disney. And he told me that uh, they had this movie called Wreck-It Ralph coming out. I didn't know anything about it. And he said, we have this song uh, that we wanted in the film and it suddenly occurred to me that it would be great to have you guys do it. And uh, I explained to him that, you know, that, that Gary had just just passed away. And he said, well, is there any way we could, you know, someone could substitute singing it? So uh, Danny Jones, who was a close friend here uh, and was in our band for a long time and had a pretty good voice. And so we did. A, uh, we decided to use him. And uh, they sent in a producer from L.A. to work with me. We co-produced it together. And um, uh, and that, that's that's how we got it. But the, it was right at the movie was coming out in October of 2012. And this happened in August. And so uh, it was a very hurried process. But it's actually the theme. And we're hoping that it'll be used in the in the second Wreck-It Ralph movie. We, we've been in, dis, you know, we've talked in discussions back and forth. And uh, there's nothing settled at the moment because these, these things, they take a, like a year or two to do and things can change in scripts. So, um, you know, we're, you know, Tom said, hey, we'll be in touch and we'll let you know what's going on. So, I mean, we hope to be in there, uh, but, you know, we'll see. I tell you, Tammy, it was a thrill. And, and we've had, Gary and I had many thrills. We've been so fortunate in the business. You know, we also did the theme to the TV show WKRP in Cincinnati. And and I've had a couple of the hits I've written. We, we've had a lot of different success in different ways. But to go into a theater and sit there and see your name and hear your song, see your name on the screen in a movie theater on a Disney movie, was just a, I mean, what a thrill for me. I wish Gary had been there to see it, but just a tremendous uh, thrill. We did a, another song uh, for another movie. It didn't get into the movie, uh, which sometimes happens. But uh, uh, so we're, you know, we're, we're all around. But that was quite a thrill to uh, to do. That. Another thrill I had was when I got to meet, uh, we went to Chicago a year ago when they did the celebration uh, uh, anniversary for record, or excuse me, for Pac-Man and got to meet uh, the fellow that had, uh, that, uh, had uh, come up with the game Pac-Man. And uh, we got to meet each other, and he could not speak uh, English. But when we were meeting and standing there, he leaned over to my ear and he goes, "I got Pac-Man fever," you know. <laughs> so it was really a really a neat thing. So you know, it's it, it's there's so many stories that we have uh, that I have about. It's just been great. It's been a great thing to be a part of. Thirty years later, after Pac-Man fever, you're featured in a film about arcade machines. Like, does that get any better? <laughs> I kind of thought about it and. Probably somewhere in the world at any time, one of our songs is being heard, especially Wreck-It Ralph, because the movie is all over the world and it, it continues to be shown everywhere. I mean, not just, you know, in theaters anymore. It's everywhere. And so it's kind of neat to know that probably somewhere in the world right now, somebody is hearing our song in the movie or hearing one of our other songs. And that, that's a neat thrill. And what other projects are you currently working on that you could tell our listeners and maybe they can go ahead on your website and check that out? Uh, we did a song called Old School Games that was about, you know, talking about uh, the games from the 80s because that's it, it, it seems to be a, a, a very big thing right now. Uh, uh, the, the older games, the 80s games are hitting back. So we did a, a song and you can see that as a video with it. If you go online and look up Buckner Garcia or Old School Games, uh, you, you can see that video. And so we released that. We're kind of kind of promoting that. We have the website where we did the video for the 30th anniversary, we redid Pac-Man. It's called Pac-Man Fever, Eat Em Up. And it's a really, just a cool video. We uh, 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 Steelhouse Productions did the video. And it continues, we got over 4 million views at the moment. And it just continues to build every day. People really love the video. And that I think you find that on YouTube at pacmanfevereatemup.com. Or no, Pac-Man Fever, Eat Em Up uh, on YouTube. That's, that's what you want to do. And I think you'll enjoy the video. It's pretty cool. And before we end our interview, I always ask my guests three Disney-themed questions. I call them the Fab Three. So we'll start with the Donald one, which is, as a child, what was one of the first Disney films you saw in the movie theater? Oh, my. Probably uh, 
Fantasia. I think Fantasia. And our goofy question, what Disney character, besides the ones in Wreck-It Ralph, do you think would be your best friend if you met them in person? Disney going to be my best friend, uh, probably Goofy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I guess, I guess, um, I guess Mickey. You know, I like Mickey. And speaking of Mickey, our final question, our Mickey question, if I asked you to name any Disney song at this very moment, what immediately comes to mind? Oh, boy. Um, I liked, you know, The Lion King was a great movie. And uh, what was the song? Elton John did a song in there, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Uh, he did The Circle of Life. Uh... Yeah, I thought that was I thought that was a, a really great song. I really liked that one. And I like that. And I like that movie a lot, too. I, let, I'm me so... tell you, let me tell you one little secret about the song that not many people know. Okay. When we did the song, you know, as I said, my Gary had passed away. We took uh, back to the original Pac-Man Fever. We pulled the tapes out and were able to take his vocal off there. And in Pac-Man Fever, uh, in the instrumental part, there's a part where Gary goes, huh, just that little word in the middle of it. And we put that in the song. And if you listen to the guitar break in, Pac- in uh, Wreck-It, Wreck-It, Ralph, in the middle of it there, you'll hear a huh. And that's that's Gary. It's a tribute to him. That's from Gary from the original Pac-Man record. I, I love it when there's like those little type of tributes that are added into songs that not many not many people know about. But it's just that's really yeah, nice. Know, I think he would be so happy with that. Yeah, you know, a little secret. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show, Jerry. And uh, hopefully we will uh, we will see you back uh, teaming up with Wreck-It Ralph himself and fix it, Felix. <laughs> I would love to do it. I'm here. Let me know. I'll be happy to, to, to come on the show again. I reckon, I reckon, I fix it, I fix it, I fix it, fix it.